Welcome to Back to Basics, Healing Your Body and Preventing Disease. I'm Dr. Kella Price. Glad to be here today. I am wanting to share a lot of information with you in a very short period of time. My background is a master's of science in exercise science with a specialty in sports nutrition. I have recovered from autoimmune disease. I'm a previous NPC bikini and fitness competitor and a pageant girl, currently your doctor universe, seven time Iron Man. And I specialize in certain specialty populations, including athletes, cancer survivors, perimenopausal and menopausal individuals, autoimmune disease, as well as corrective exercise for recovery. Last year, I was recognized as a member of the National Fitness Hall of Fame for fitness instruction and teaching. And I'm the creator of Healthy Fit and its 12 comprehensive programs, as well as gym owner of Healthy Fit Alito. I'm so happy to be here with you today and share my knowledge. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions as we go through our program or later. Don't forget to check in on Facebook. Even if you're watching this on the replay, check in at Healthy Fit and tag Dr. World Productions in the post with a photo of you. Please take pictures of any slides that resonate with you to share with your following and tag me at Kella Price and at Healthy Fitness Life Coach. You can also use at Dr. Universe. So let's talk now. Please put in the chat, what are some of the health challenges that you face for better health and wellness? I wanna make sure we address some of your concerns during our programming today. Oftentimes, some of the challenges that I hear from clients include having busy schedules, picky eaters, lack of whole foods in their diet, and emotional or mindless eating. Do any of those sound like you? Let's talk first about busy schedules. Keep it simple. This is the best way to stay on track with meal planning. I try to make simple but healthy and eye appealing meals that take less than 30 minutes to prepare. I do a lot of cook once, eat twice types of things that we can change the way that a main course tastes by adding and um, changing up the recipe for our leftovers. We're not eating the same meal again. I offer meal plan assistance and planning meals is so important. Making sure you have healthy snacks available and really learning how to meal prep for success. One of the most common things I hear from clients is the fact that inflammation is an issue for many people. And a lot of it comes back to our diet. This is present in most of our autoimmune conditions and can also trigger adrenal fatigue in your body. So the goal as we are eating and creating healthy habits is to be able to restore balance and an anti-inflammatory environment in your body. And there's three ways that we can do this. The first is to identify food intolerances. Third, second is to repair gut health. And the third is to increase your omega-3 and omega-6 ratio one-to-one -one for better immune function. One of the things people ask me a lot is, what kind of oil can I use to reduce inflammation? Because some of the vegetable oils are highly processed and can cause uh, trigger reactions in your body. So I recommend coconut oil, extra virgin olive oil, or cod liver oil in your food preparation. So one of the goals of our talk today is about healing and repairing the body. And I mentioned that nutrition is a huge part of this. Eating better nutrition helps your body repair because your body is constantly creating new cells within the body 
supporting new muscle growth, supporting bone growth with the nutrition that you put inside the body. So if you're not eating good building blocks, those cells, those muscles, those bones are going to be weak and susceptible to higher rates of infection, inflammation in your body, uh, breakage um, or injury. So we want to remove some of the reactive foods that are causing inflammation and problems. Look at possible supplementation, integrating more relaxation into your day. Who needs more relaxation? We can always use more of that, right? And creating ha healthy habits to support the body's natural process and defenses. So let's talk about eating better nutrition. One of the things I recommend is eating organic when available. So you're not susceptible to um, the contaminants or the toxins used um, in pesticides and growth and production of um, farming when we're not using organic. When we use organic in our diet, we get up to 90% more nutrients and organic growers use natural pesticides and fertilizers instead of chemicals that can impact your health. The other thing that sounds pretty simple, but can be challenging if you are on the go and you're not planning is less processed foods. So when we go to the grocery store, we wanna shop the outside edge of the grocery to get all the fresh fruits, vegetables, meats, things that are not packaged. The reason that we want to eat healthy foods and put good things in our body is it can cause problems if we're not consuming good nutrition. Our gut and our gut health is linked to so many things in our immune system. And this graphic, I love it, kind of shows all of the interactions with the gut and other parts of your body and the importance of the gut to our overall health. So if we fix our gut health, it can impact our mental health. It can impact other functions in other areas of our body. As I mentioned earlier, your body creates cells from the food that you consume because so you, you literally are what you eat <laughs> because your body is creating new cells based on the, the inputs that you provide. So we want to reduce eating out and convenience foods. Plan for the unexpected because if we don't plan, then we're planning to fail and things always go amiss. So we plan for the unexpected. I carry emergency snacks in my car because errands always run longer than expected. And if you don't plan for that, then you're out and you're hungry and you don't have a snack, you're more likely to uh, grab the most convenient thing, which would be the packaged things at the gas station or fast food. As parents, it's so important that we set the example for our kids because they are watching us. And when we do eat healthier, we have more energy. We maintain a healthy weight and we reduce risk of heart disease, diabetes, and other illnesses. I like to try to keep it easy to eat healthy. And the graphic here that is a symbolizes a plate and how you would disperse uh, food groups on your plate. So half of your plate should be vegetables, 25% your proteins and 25% your carbohydrates. So you're able to look at that and assess whether or not you are meeting your daily requirements. We should also be looking at eating one to two servings of fruit each day which the serving would be a one cup. And ideally these are fresh fruits. And then one to two servings of healthy fats each day. And a serving is one third cup. 
when we talk about healthy fat, sometimes people get confused because the word fat in our society has a negative connotations, but there are healthy fats that are building blocks in your body and your body needs this. These could include avocado, low fat cheese, nut butters, olives, and seeds. One of the other recommendations I have, which is so helpful for a lot of clients is try not to eat your carbohydrates at dinner. Uh, replace that 25% of your plate with veggies. And there's a couple reasons for that, primarily because many of us are sedentary after dinner. And so your body has to be able to burn off all the calories you've consumed at dinner before you go to bed, or those calories are going into your storage. So given that you are more sedentary, unless you're going to the gym after dinner and before bed, um, you don't necessarily need a large volume of energy that we would get from carbohydrates. So you could shift those carbohydrates. You eat your carbs at breakfast and lunch when you have an opportunity to utilize those calories and eat a lighter dinner. It's important to track because if you're not tracking what you're eating, you can't identify uh, challenges that you're having and how your body responds to the food and the fuel that you're putting inside. So there are some apps that you can use or you could track in a notebook, track with photos, track with a food journal. I provide a, a journal for my clients to help them track. But quite honestly, it doesn't matter what you use as long as you're tracking and you're utilizing that as an information tool to adjust how you're eating and the results that you're getting. So we want to create a healthier plate. And we talked about the vegetables being half of the plate, but it's important to get a variety of different colors and vitamins and nutrition, uh, vitamins and minerals in your food. So I encourage clients to try new things, read labels, eat more minimally processed foods, and again, increase the vegetable intake. Because quite honestly, most of us are not getting enough vegetables. And so that's like a free food. As long as it's not slathered in butter <laughs> it, or fried, you can eat as much vegetables as you wish, and it's not going to negatively impact your um, your calorie intake. Most of our vegetables take more calories to actually process than the calories that we consume. And then we're getting all those nutritionally dense things into our diet that are helping us be stronger and more resilient against disease autoimmune conditions, and um, generally illness. So looking at our meals, think about creating that plate and some ideas for breakfast. This is probably the most challenging to get your veggies in. Sometimes I put my eggs on a little bed of salad or I'll have a leftover side of salad or leftover vegetables aside of them from the previous night. If you're making an omelet, it's really easy to integrate just about any vegetable you want into your omelet. Um, you have the example there with the, the poached eggs with the avocado and the seeds. Those are your healthy fats in there. Eating it with a side of um, a vegetable would add to that as well. And then we have our carbohydrate. We have the oatmeal with berries. That's our fruit and our carbohydrate. Sometimes I don't eat oatmeal because I'm allergic. <laughs> so I will use quinoa as my um, grain for that, my carbohydrate. Lunch. Lunch is typically one of the meals that I eat a salad with some sort of protein on it. A lot of times incorporating uh, seeds in there. It's easy to incorporate a variety of different um, colors of vegetables and pretty much use 
anything. The the salad on the right has some beets in there, um, and also some pears as well as um, watercress and salad greens. Uh, I'll use chicken on salad, fish, any leftover protein from the night before. You can even put leftover quinoa, rice, or a little bit of pasta on on your salad. Um, serve it cold as part of your lunch to get a well-balanced meal. And then dinner, as I mentioned, I usually cut out the carbohydrates. So we have here um, on the right, a salad with chicken. And on the left, we have a good piece of salmon with some roast vegetables. So those are two examples. If your family is more into pasta for dinner, it's a mindset shift. And so you can do things like spaghetti squash or zoodles, um, which are the zucchini noodles cauliflower rice instead of regular rice. You can swap out that carb with a vegetable-based option in lieu of the noodles, rice, or potato-heavy meal. Some other meal tips. Drink a full glass of water before starting any meal. Eat those veggies first. I don't know why, but research shows that if you eat the veggies first, and take a bite of veggies first, you will consume more vegetables than the other person. It's science, it's research-based, so I would encourage you, um, eating those vegetables first can also help reduce your calorie, um, calorie consumption because again, they are nutritionally dense for a small amount of calories. So if you eat a bunch of vegetables first, you're less likely to fill up on um, carbohydrates or heavier items. Use a smaller size plate. You don't have to use the giant dinner plate. I have dinner plates that I can't even put in my dishwasher because they're too large. So using a smaller plate, like an appetizer size plate or a, a side plate will help you consume more because it looks like more on the plate. Don't eat on the go. <laughs> Some of us are busy and in a rush, but when we're not focused on what we're eating, we're more likely to consume more calories. Eat at the table without distractions like the TV so that you can better enjoy your food. And again, this is also not only for enjoyment, but also being more in tune to your brain and what you're consuming so that you don't over consume. If we're distracted by TV, we are not focused on the food in front of us. Plus, that's not good for creating good family conversation either. Remember, it's okay not to finish the plate. I was raised in a family that we had to finish our plate of food and we sat at the table until we were finished, but that can lead to overeating. And sometimes our eyes are bigger than our stomach and we start eating and then we're satisfied and full. You don't need to finish the plate. It's okay to wrap up that food. And if you get hungry later, you can pull it out and reheat it as a snack. But it's totally okay. Um, and th again, this is a mindset shift that we have to get through. Meal planning is so important. I mentioned before, make a plan or plan to fail. I even include in my meal prep planning sn healthy snacks, things like vegetables and hummus, fruit, chia pudding, and uh, chopped fruit. Things that are healthy snacks, hard-boiled eggs. Um, sometimes I'll eat sliced turkey and some, I call it my salad box, some uh, spinach and some cherry tomatoes, things that I can eat with my hands while I'm working on my computer or taking a break outside. I mentioned I carry emergency snacks in the car and that's so important to have snacks available to you so that if you're hungry, you can satisfy that need without getting something that is not within your meal plan or that you didn't intend to eat. My family, we sit down and we plan the meal for the week, taking into account things like work, school, and kids' activities. Some other meal prep 
tips. I use a calendar to plan, looking at when my family is going to be at the dinner table with me and when we have events, when I'll be working late, when people have activities that we need to eat earlier or I need to be able to prepare something that can be quickly reheated. This is very helpful because if you have a really long day and you get home late, how likely are you to spend 45 minutes in the kitchen cooking when it's seven o'clock at night? Not very likely, right? So you want to have something planned for that night that's either pre-made so that it's ready to go and you can just reheat it because we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to call for pizza. <laughs> um, or we have something that's really fast that you can cook in like 20 minutes or less. I encourage you to let your kids help. When we are doing meal planning, my family, I ask my kids to help select our menu items, as well as the vegetables that we're having with the meals, because when they help plan the meals, they're more likely to eat it. You want to choose versatile ingredients, things that you can cook once and use for multiple recipes. So when I'm planning my menu, if I have two nights that I'm eating chicken, I'm going to marinate the chicken for both nights, as well as a couple extra pieces to have next day on salads or with my um as a snack item and that way I can cook all the chicken at once and it's all marinated and you can have different flavors and then you can utilize it for different things so I, again I plan um usually a little bit of leftovers so I can have a lunch with some of it the next day and again I tweak those things to make it um, easy to have the leftovers and it tastes totally different. So an example of that might be you have um, salmon and roast vegetables for dinner and then you have your leftover salmon on a salad the next day. So you're not necessarily eating the same thing. And if you had some of the leftover vegetables, you could actually include those in on top of the greens if you wanted or you could use the leftover vegetables in your omelet. I have a day that I sit down and we talk about the calendar and then I order my groceries on a different day and then I have a prep day. So usually they're uh, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but it doesn't matter which day as long as you give yourself time to do the prep work. So the prep day is where we pre-marinate or cook the meat, cook the beans, rice, and quinoa. Remember that uh, beans, fresh beans like black beans or pintos last about five days. So something like that, you would want to plan the, the bean items earlier in the week so that they don't spoil before you get a chance to eat them. Prep your raw veggies, things like uh, cutting up celery sticks for um, your hummus, slicing up carrots, um, anything like that that you can do. Some vegetables I don't pre-cut. I don't like pre-cutting um, peppers or tomatoes because I, I feel like they start to degrade once you cut them and I like to just cut those fresh. I hard boil eggs. I hard boil like 12 to 18 eggs for my family and peel them and put them in a, in a baggie. And again, those last about five days maybe six um, before they would not be uh, good anymore. So I found that I found the number of eggs that my family is going to eat in that time period. And I, I peeled them because if I don't peel them and put them in the bag, they're not grab and go and my family's less likely to eat them. So it makes it faster to eat that as a snack. I also pre-make items that can be reheated like small omelet cups, protein waffles, or protein pancakes. And then I portion things that I want to have as grab and go into containers so that those meals are ready to go. Specifically like for my husband, because he works outside the home, when he goes to work, if the leftovers are not in the pre-portioned container, he won't take the time to put things together. So I have to make sure that those items are in the container 
ready for him to just grab and take with him. Proper hydration is so important to your health and feeling good. So most of us are not drinking enough water, but it's so important. It promotes cardiovascular health, keeps your body cool, detoxes your body, improves your brain function, improves your muscles and joint function, gives you better skin, aids in weight loss, aids in digestion, protects your body from cancer, improves mood, helps the organ and cell function, improves energy level. All of these are reasons for you to have more water. And I found carrying it helps me consume it. If I'm not carrying my water jug, like right now, I, I have a beverage here, but it is not, it is not uh, water. So I don't have water available to drink. I'm going to be behind on my hydration. How much water is enough water? Well, we want to have half of our body weight in ounces as a starting point. If you live in a dry desert or humid climate, add 16 ounces for that to help improve your body's function. Add 16 ounces if the temperature is over 90 degrees and add eight ounces for every 15 to 20 minutes of exercise. And I have an example here on the slide. A 200 pound person uh, would start with 100 ounces in Arizona at 16 ounces. It's 94 degrees at 16 ounces and they exercise for 30 minutes. That's another 16 ounces. So they're basically drinking a gallon a day. And again, carrying that jug around is the best way or that water bottle is the best way to consume the water. You can start incrementally. Initially, when you start drinking more water, you're going to feel a little bit waterlogged until your body figures out that you are giving it enough water. It will start flushing out through your system and you'll be able to drink more. You can also carbonate the water. I have a soda stream. You can infuse fruit to help um, you transition from uh, flavored beverages like soda. Drink a full glass before every meal. This will help with your digestion um, and will also help you eat less food. Um, we already talked about the infused fruit. Sometimes I do herbs as well. Um, peppermint is a common thing that I'll put in mine. Um, you can even put things like oregano. Oregano is really good for allergies. <laughs> you can infuse it. Um, if you are at a social event, alternate alcohol with water. You drink your glass of wine and then you drink a full glass of water. Then you drink wine and water and you alternate. This will slow down your, your alcohol consumption, those empty calories, and you'll feel so much better <laughs> during the event. You can also track your water. One of the tools that I recommend is Aqualert. There is a free option and you can program the size of your water bottle and how much you're trying to drink and it will send you reminders on your phone. Let's talk a little bit now about autoimmune diets. The Ooh. autoimmune process can actually be stopped or even reversed in some cases when triggers are eliminated. As we mentioned earlier, inflammation is one of the primary culprits. And again, we want to identify those food tolerances, repair gut health, and improve our ratio of omega-3 and omega-6 for better immune function. One of the other things that we want to do is eat uh, an anti-inflammatory diet. So we're eliminating reactive foods that can cause us problems. And the best way to figure out what is causing you problems is to take all of these things out for a couple weeks and slowly add them back in one at a time to see if you're intolerant. I also have um, ordered blood work. You can do a blood allergen test that can be helpful as well to identify ones that are maybe not necessarily on the list. Like I'm allergic to um, brewer's yeast, which is not on the list, and oysters. Um, so gluten, 
there are 55 diseases that they've identified that can be caused by eating gluten. So a gluten-free diet can be beneficial to so many people for that reason. Dairy, eggs, especially egg whites, lectins, uh, foods high in lectins include beans, legumes, grains, and your nightshade vegetables, your um, tomatoes, eggplant, uh, potatoes, eliminating cross-reactive foods, things that your immune system often mistakes for gluten, like chocolate, coffee, cereal grains, eliminating uh, grains that are also cross-reactive, including rye, barley, spelt, hamut, oats, millet, corn, rice. Sugar. Sugar is a huge one. If you can reduce any um, big sugar in your diet, we're going to get natural sugar from our fruits. Remember that? And um, natural sugar through things like honey and agave. But Processed sugar, if we can eliminate those, would have amazing impact to your health. Because two hours post-consumption of sugar, immune function is reduced by 50%. So if you have a lot of sugar in your diet, you're subjecting your immune system to contaminates and illness. And finally, your tree nuts, eliminating tree nuts. Then we look at supplementation. This can really help your body. And I always tell people, we we don't want to guess. We want to take a benchmark through um, testing for the things that we have listed on this slide to determine where your body is missing the mark so that you could determine appropriate supplementation. So you have a baseline of some blood work. And I, I work with a lab company to order this for clients. And then talk about supplementation if there's any deficiencies and then we retest in about three months to see if there's been improvement and these are ones that I um, recommend my clients get if they haven't had them in the last uh, year to see if there's any deficiencies deficiencies can cause you not to feel good things like excessive fatigue difficulty losing weight So the other aspect of feeling better and improving your overall health is relaxation. This is so important to preventing things like adrenal fatigue. So I want you to think about what you do to relax or what do you do for self-care? Do you have a self-care Sunday? One of the things that I love to do on the weekends is take a long bath. I always do a, a hair mask for my hair to dehydrate it. I do a face mask. Sometimes I'll do my nails and have a relaxing afternoon to just help wash away any of the stress and repair your body. It can be things like spending time outside. I love getting some sunshine. I spend a lot of my hours outside. Um, on my computer working in my my outdoor office because the vitamin D you get from the sun is beneficial. The sounds of nature can be really healing to your body. You just have to find something that works for you. A lot of people like to listen to uplifting music as another option. Here are some other um, examples. Five to 10 minutes in the sunshine can be really a big mood booster or light therapy. So I have a, a happy light that is next to my makeup table. And so when I'm putting on makeup and, and preparing my face or brushing my hair in the morning, I turn that on and it helps uh, boost some of that vitamin D produ production through that light therapy. Meditation. Uh, breathing exercises. Science shows that just three breaths can relax your body and reduce your blood pressure. So let's try that now. We're going to breathe all the way down to our pelvic floor below our belly button. We're going to expand our rib cage as we breathe in. And we're going to feel our chest move too. So we're breathing our, our whole thoracopelvic cylinder. Nice deep breath. 
hold, exhale. Again, hold, exhale. One more time. Some other things that we can do include adult coloring, playing with your pets, um, making sure you're getting enough sleep, and also taking stretch breaks. So we talked about hydration. If you're properly hydrating and you're working on your computer, you're going to have to get up and stretch regularly to use the bathroom. But even uh, having periods of time that you're seated, you can just stretch in your chair like that big inhale up. Exhale, bring your hands behind your ears, bringing those elbows back, rotate and twist, lengthening the spine, looking behind you, come back to neutral, big inhale up, exhale, bring your hands behind your ears, stretch and rotate to the other side, overhead side stretch, reaching up and over, feel that good stretch from your pinky all the way down to your hip bone, yes? And the other side, reach up and over. Good job, do you feel better? That didn't take a lot of time. We want, and our goal here is to support the body's natural defenses. There's some other things that you can look at to help do this including acupuncture, eating more curcumin or turmeric, making sure you're getting enough vitamin D, increase your T regulatory cells through more uh, weightlifting or strength training. This is also important for women as we age to maintain that um, muscle mass that burns calories while we're at rest, removing those processed foods, implementing inflammatory vegetable oils, white sugar and alcohol, strengthen and repair your gut health, reduce your stress and reduce environmental pollutants. So some of the fundamentals when we're looking at repairing are addressing liver support, adrenal recovery and gut balance. In terms of liver support, for the liver is our main detoxification organ and is necessary for converting T4 to T3. We want to create that alkaline environment in our body by eating more fruits and vegetables. Some people may benefit from doing a vegan cleanse and eating more fiber, avoiding alcohol and caffeine, using things like hydrotherapy and asana as a tool to help with detoxification dry brushing, using probiotics, and exercising and sweating is also beneficial for our liver. We can also detoxify our life. We ingest uh, through our water supply, fluoride and chlorine, xenoestrogens, these are endocrine disrupting chemicals and, and things like detergents and beauty products, cookware, Cleaning, looking at cleaning, natural cleaning products, cleaner air, beauty products, and mental positivity. So a startling fact was in 2006, the CDC reported that the average American had 116 out of 148 synthetic compounds in their body. What do you think that's doing to your body's physical health? pretty scary. As a beauty queen and a pageant girl, uh, one of the things that I look at is using skin and body beauty products that don't have the dirty dozen because up to 60% of what we put on our skin gets absorbed through um, that largest organ of our skin. Things like aluminum, mineral oil, parabens, phthalates, um, synthetic fragrances, and triclosan. So this would be a great thing to check and clean out your beauty products and get rid of things that have chemicals that are harming your health. 
some of you may be wondering, well, she mentioned adrenal fatigue. What is it and how do I know if I have it? Some of the symptoms of adrenal fatigue include irritability, poor memory and concentration, frequent or chronic infections, headaches, hair loss, skipping meals, thyroid problems, the need for caffeine in the morning or after lunch, being emotionally overstressed, tenderness in your low back, depression, low blood pressure, chronic inflammation, chronic pain, insomnia, getting a second wind at bedtime. And if you're menopausal or perimenopausal, you're more likely to suffer adrenal fatigue. One of the main things we do to assess adrenal fatigue, if you have a bunch of those symptoms or um, conditions, is a cortisol level test that can be indicative. Unfortunately, treating and repairing your body, it is repairable, but it could take three months to up to two years, depending on the severity of your case. Sometimes we look at hor hormone supplements and other supplementation based on those tests that we talked about earlier, incorporating adaptogens into our diet to help uh, ward off radicals in our body, removing stressors. This could be removing things, people, or activities that are stressful in your life and getting more sleep. So to repair your adrenal gland, it's going to happen with additional sleep is a critical component. Trying to go to bed from 10, 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. or getting 10 to 12 hours of sleep. This might mean you have to go to bed earlier. Getting out of the rhythm of hit or high intensity training and focusing more on mild to moderate exercise to heal your body. This will lower some of those cortisol levels that are necessary to repair that gland that emits um, and releases the cortisol, less caffeine, and balancing your blood sugar through better eating habits, eating more regularly and eating less sugar. Oftentimes we see nutrition depletion with high cortisol, um, depleting specifically of vitamin C, iron, potassium, zinc, and magnesium. So again, we want to test before we supplement um, to see where we're lacking. Remember that it can take a period of time to change habits and start to feel better. And sometimes individuals want to see change overnight. What I do know is that it takes consistency to see an impact. And a lot of times this graph shows a curve up is what actually happens, but I think it's more like a zigzaggy line because people will do really good and then they fall off and they struggle and then they'll, they'll get back on the track and then they fall off. And so it's um, trial and error in a process, but we can change our habits through small incremental changes and consistency is key. And having a, a accountability coach like me is always helpful to help encourage you, give you feedback and encouragement. Stick with it and think about when you're making changes to your health and lifestyle, think about why you're doing it. Who are you doing it for? What is your motivation? Because the motivation will wane, but the reason that you started will not. I would love to hear from you in the chat and hear some of your takeaways. We talked about so much today and it's important to be able to integrate some of these things into your daily life so that we are able to find better health through taking action and staying focused on uh, repairing and taking care of our body for the long run. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. If you have further questions, you can reach out to me. Um, I'm very accessible. I'm available for one-on-one -on -one consultations and I provide in-depth tools, trackers, planning assistance, and nutritional coaching to help you get on the right track.
I used a number of resources and references. One of my favorite tools is this book that I show on this slide, How Not to Die, Discover the Food Scientifically Proven to Prevent and Reverse Disease. Scientifically Proven. This book is life-changing. And in a nutshell, spoiler alert, most of it talks about eating more of a plant-based diet and how plants can help us heal our body because our body is amazing and do great things. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you found this helpful and informational.